boom. Here we are, Friday. Wait, it's not Friday night. It is a Monday night, in fact, since I, the last time I checked the calendar. Monday night special edition of the Art and Stuff Show. I'm your socially, dashingly, distractingly beautiful, suave and sassy, smooth as ice co host, Sean Aaron. And with me, as always, my brother in art. The very attractive, the very sexy, very distinguished. Always narcissistic, but never vain. Joseph Michael Sontag, or Joe M. Sontag, if you prefer, or as the Pope likes to call me, JMS. Welcome, everybody, to our show. We are extremely excited. We have, in my opinion, uh, a legend of the independent scene, although he's worked for the bigger companies as well. But I remember him specifically as a kid, as the artist and creator of She, which I always pronounced wrong. I don't know if you did that when, when you were a kid, but I always pronounced it shy. Did anybody else do that? Because I, you know, just no, I think, no, I, just, no, no. Okay, just me. All right, illiterate. All right, just, I'm sorry. Just, just. It's because you're from Central America. <sighs> I am from Central America, and you know, but you know, I like it. it. You know, it's good. It's good out here. But I will say this: I've been having this poster. If you can see this, I got a hell of a glare here. But yeah, this beautiful. I'm telling you, dude. This print on my wall since 2007 when I bought it. Let me just. That's why I bought it. I mean, Damn. this is why I bought it. But right, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a pervert. I got you. I, I am a pervert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, me too. Hey guys, see you all in the chat. We're gonna bring you up here in a second. But before Sean's the official hype man and bringing our guests in. So Sean, why don't you do our honors and bring our guest in? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! With Mr. Billy Tucci. What's up, Billy? What's up, boys? How we doing? Yeah. Teen sensation great, Billy Thank Tucci. Hell doing yeah. great. Sensation Billy Tucci. Heck yes. There you go. There you go. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Oh, hey, you Jimmy. Too. Thank you for coming through. Nah, thank you guys you for too. having me on, man. Really appreciate it. So, thank you so much. You definitely. It's an honor to have you on. Bear. Mark, oh yeah, you got thank you guys for coming by. Thank you. Flying now. Thank you everyone for checking out the ch the channel, and uh, we will we try go. to hop in all these comments. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. As we go, and that, Billy, was, that was that was that was very rude, Joe. Very rude. That was very rude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Billy, we like to kick off the show with asking our guests: Can you give us your origin? What what brought you to be a geek? What brought you to be an artist? <laughs> like, how did you become Billy Tucci, Teen Sensation? Thank you. I like, I like the Teen Sensation part. Um, let me think. Uh, you know, I went to school for illustration. Uh, oh, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, that was <laughs> Hold on. Um, yeah, I went to college for, you know, I always drew when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. I loved comics when I was a little kid, you know, maybe like, you know, elementary school into junior high. But the weird thing is, is I really love them so much is that once I started to become a better artist, I, um, I moved away from comics because I was so intimidated by them. I and mean, I saw guys oh. like, you know, Frank Frazetta, Joe Kubert. And George Perez, you know, Dave yeah. Stevens doing the Rocketeer, guys like that. And I just was like, I could never do this. I could never do this. So I just, I kind of stopped, really. And then I went to school for illustration because um, I want to be an illustrator. And I remember a friend of mine, um, uh, a, a friend of mine brought in the Amazing Spider-Man number 300. It was 1988. Oh, and man. I was just blown away by it. And I saw Tom McFarlane's art for the first time. And it wasn't the same. He was not one of the old masters. Do you know what I mean? Like, yep. like his art was good and it was fun, but it was so dynamic and different because I'm like, I could never be George Perez. But this guy, right. if this guy can do it, <laughs> it's different. I can do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it, was, right, it was completely right. original to what they would do and completely different. Yep. You know, it was more fun. It wasn't. You know, you can say what you want. His anatomy may not be, you know, he's no John Romita. You know, he's no John Bichette. Right. But he's yeah. having fun with it. So exactly. he got it because of him that he can do it. I, I was inspired that, you know what, I can do this. I don't have to be, you know, uh, you know, John Byrne. You don't have to be like that. Yeah. I can be me. I don't have to be Art Adams. You know, I could just be Billy Tucci and people are looking for something other than that great upper echelon, you know, type of artist. And uh, and that was it. And I got the bug, and I really got into Daredevil then, Frank Miller's Daredevil. Mm. Um, sort of buying a ton of back issues. I mean, I bought everything. And that's when I realized I was, was going to do it. And then, um, 
19, you know, I was trying to break in for a couple of years, going to the comic book conventions. And then in the meantime, I had my own story. I had my own character I started doing uh, with she. And I remember going to the uh, San Diego Comic-Con uh, in 93 and getting turned down by everybody. Like everybody turned me down. Um, except for Brian Polito, who liked my stuff. And Brian Polito, nice. six foot table in small press. And Brian gave me, oh, let me move my mic over here. Sorry. And no, Brian, you're fine. Yep, sorry. And Brian um, gave me a pinup. He goes, Yeah, I'll give you some work. How about doing it? You can do a pinup for me. And we just hung out and he he treated me with respect. And I came back. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do my own comic. Um, but uh, I had also gotten a meeting with and I had about 12 pages, 12, 13 pages of the first she story. And oh, then wow. I got a meeting set up with, with uh, John Ramita, senior at, at, at Marvel. And I showed him my portfolio, and he really liked it. And he's like, what is this? This is, this is really good. And I said, oh, it's my own comic. You know, it's my own comic I'm going to make. And he's like, wait a minute. You're going to do your own comic book? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I want to publish my own comic. It's a full-color book. I told him the story, and he goes, what the hell are you doing here for? <laughs> he goes, your own book. He goes, let me tell you. He goes, here's my card. If it doesn't work out, if, if your own comic doesn't work out, your own self-publishing deal doesn't work out, you can always call me. You, you'll always have work at Marvel. You'll always have a wow. place at Marvel, which kind of didn't end up being true, um, <clears throat> even after all the success. It's good to hear, though. Stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, John was gone. By, you know, he had retired by then. Right. And, uh, and then, man, dude, I, I, I had no idea how to put together a comic book, but I went to the library. I went to comic shops. I asked them where they got their comics from. I just started researching the hell out of it. What, what was previews? What was the distributor magazines? It was Capital City. And uh, there was also um, uh, Heroes World, Capital City, and previews were the main ones, a bunch of smaller ones. And I just started making phone calls. I, had, I was living out of my one-bedroom apartment in Queens. I had my girlfriend and my wife sign letters as the marketing director of Crusade <laughs> Comic. Just me and her, you know. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, wouldn't you know it, man, that book, that book hit. And uh, holy shit, it took off. It took off like I can't even imagine. And it just exploded. It really did. I think people were just looking for something new and fresh. And it just, you know, it just caught lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Hey, Mark, we got Mark Poulton here that is saying Mark Poulton. to you, Mr. Tucci. What's up, Mark? <laughs> Very cool. How, how surprised were you? that the book hit the way that it did. I mean, did you have any inclination when you were getting ready to actually drop it that, that there was a buzz? Did you have a buzz that you heard about? You know, were you anticipating well, that? Yeah, the thing was is that I knew, I just knew this book was going to be a hit. I don't know why. I mean, Lady Death had come out, but I didn't know anything about it. You know, I, I met Brian Polito, but I wasn't following up. I didn't know what books were hot. And right. I, was whole, I, was, I was turned down by several other publishers that I approached with it. Um, and, uh, but I, I had no money. <laughs> like I said, I was six months behind my rent. I had met, um, Fred, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Fred Pierce of, of Valiant and oh, okay. my color separator. And, and he vouched for me and had, had Spartan printing, print the comic without me, without having any money. And wow. his enthusiasm was so contagious, you know, like people, Really, people, I think because I was so excited about it that people, they too, got excited about it. And I, when I had initial orders for 37000 and I asked them to print 50000 And they are like, wow, it, it, boy, this kid really thinks pretty much, pretty highly of himself, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, this book is going to be big. And, and uh, within, I'd say, three weeks of that book hitting, we had reorders for about 140,000 copies of that book. Wow. People didn't make them. Wow, I had 50,000, you know? Sure. So I kept about 1,000 and shipped the rest out. And it just, it was crazy, man. It was crazy, crazy time. And they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Pretty awesome. That's crazy. I, I heard a story. It couldn't just be a story, but you rented out the Intrepid. Yeah. And, like, you drove, like, a <laughs> motorcycle onto it. Like, yeah, like yeah, we had all, yeah, yeah. I rented out when we launched the Atomic Angels. Uh I want to have a launch party. So I said, well, sure. dude, I rent the Intrepid, the aircraft carrier. And there's like yeah. 500 people there. Everybody was in, everyone from comics was there. It was a great party in 1996. And uh, yeah, and I had, we had a whole bunch of motorcycles. 
like 12 or we had like 20 motorcycles when you walked in you walked through them but had all the planes and everything inside and it was great man it was a great party and uh yeah i rode, I rode my bike up i took it up on the bombay through it so it was a lot of fun oh wow that's, that's wild, wild. <laughs> Joe, I, was trying to find, I was trying to google real quick and and bring up some uh chi references but my computer is being stupid so sorry about that people I was going to have some entertaining pictures while we talked, but I'll keep on working on it. <laughs> um, you know what? I I remember seeing that book, and, and that was – because what, what year did that come out? You said it was 94? She came out in 94. 94. Okay, yep. yep. Um, March 23rd, 1994, it launched. I remember seeing – Hey, Raymond. Hey, Raymond. Um, awesome. I remember seeing that book on the shelf, and it's funny because you know, I was like – I would have been 12, I think, when I when I first read that book. And you open it up, and the first thing you see, you know, she's naked. Yeah, you know? dude, yeah. I remember shut I remember shutting the book real quick and I'm like looking around to make sure that I'm like, uh, am I gonna get in yeah, trouble? I, got a copy of it. I have uh, I got a copy of it here. Yeah, here's our uh, black line edition. It got it's one it's one of the damages. That everybody who gets our campaign gets one of these for free. Nice. So it's, a re it's our 25th anniversary, and, and yeah, if you open the book, now I don't have the original one with me, but yeah, right. there it was. There you go. <laughs> yep, there it is. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. And then I remember the Comics Code Authority called me up, because uh, I guess they saw the book at previews, called me up and tried to strong arm me into, into spending $750 so I get the Comics Code Authority. Really? So I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm like, oh, yeah, I see the Comics Code Authority. So, what? well, you send us your book and you send us the files and uh, we approve it. You know, your content. You can't have this. You can't have that. You can't have it. I'm like, wait, what, yeah, wait a minute. Why what? You want that? Wait, so I'm, you want me to pay you for you to then censor my comic book? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, it's a Comics Code Authority. You get the official stamp of the comic. I'm like. So is this, and you know, and, and comic shops all have it, you know, this is, I'm like, wait a minute, so wait, but can I get into comic shops without it? And like, well, technically yes, but I'm like, all right, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I mean, get out of here. I think that was something that, you know, like the image guys fought so hard to get away from, you yeah. know, and that's, they didn't have anything on any of their books. And as a kid, when you get to see, you know, I grew up in the, the action movie era, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger's and the Van Dams and, and the Steven Seagal's and all them. And I'm already watching movies where guys are getting shot up, arms are being broken, blood all over the place, Die Hard. I mean, fucking all the cool shit that was in Die Hard. See, that's and normal. I, like, the fact that right. that's and, not around on, like, the regular for kids. Yeah. It turned out okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exa yeah exactly. We all played Army when we were kids. Right. We, yeah. Yeah. Guns. we all had, you know, dirt bikes. I don't know about you guys. I mean, we didn't wear helmets, jumping, jumping trails right. and jumping things. And we all turned out all right, you know. I mean, heck, I grew up. Part. I grew up with a BB gun in my hand, and I moved to, you know, uh, you know, right. I, I, I hunt, you know, I hunt, I fish, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I think I'm just a regular, normal guy. It's this this pussification of, of the country, you know what I mean? With these people that try to teach you how men should act like men and how they should, you know, how how they should be. And yeah. it's like, who the hell are you? Yeah, right. we're yet enough to worry about with, with this culture where everyone just you know everyone gets a trophy, all this crap. Yeah, and that's what stems yep. all this stuff. You know what I mean? Because people can't take a joke, you can't insult each other. You know what I mean? It, it's 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 soft, soft. Can't have difference of opinions. Can't you have know. difference of opinion. Yeah. Yep, I feel. I don't, it. I don't go for that crap. I'll tell you that, man. I don't have time for that. Yeah, and I think that's one I, one thing I've really respected about you over the last few years. I've just heard you talk and just how you handle yourself is, hey, you don't, you know, you just do your own thing, and that's yeah. that's awesome, you know. Yeah, live and let live. I don't care what you do. You know, yep. I personally, I don't know anyone who cares who marries who. I really don't. Right. I don't know anyone like that. So I don't know where I, you know, I don't know racist people. I don't. Maybe because I grew up on Long <laughs> Island. I grew up in a, in a mixed race town, you know. Um, but we all treat each other like equals because we are. We we, mm -hmm. we are equals. And, you know, you could, you could screw around with your friends, blah, 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 you know. But you're there. If there was ever a fight with the next town over at the beach, which we would have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got everybody going together. Spanish guys and Jewish guys and black guys. Hey, you know, I, everybody. Sure. Together, you know? You know? Yep. Mm -hmm. All together. Yeah. Break that. You know, there was, no, there was none of that crap. And, the tri-state mentality. Jersey, New York. Yeah. Connecticut, like, like, that's how just we thought. Yeah. You know, like. Everything else is just a different world, I guess. 
Yeah, and and the thing is that you can't be honest with each other. You got to tiptoe around things. You know, I've had it. I really have. But you know, then again, I'm not one who gets political on the you know on Twitter and crap because I don't care. You know, right? I really don't care. I, I respect somebody. They have a if they like one person for Congress and I like another person, I don't care. Hey, yep. that's what you vote for. Well, I'm not going to gatekeep you who you vote for. Yeah. For sure. Who the hell am I to do that? Uh, yeah, the only thing that matters is if I could come over and you make awesome ribs and we're still voting. <laughs> you know? like, yeah, I don't care who you vote for, you know? Yep. Yep. Hell yeah. that's, that's what we've lost. That's what we've lost. That's ridiculous. Yeah, well, I think people are getting sick and tired of it. I hope so. Yeah. You know, it's like, been too I, long already. What, what drives me nuts is like with the whole with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, you have something for the first time that is really out there, you know, since the 60s. And this is a real problem that has to be addressed. And then you get these rioters and mm -hmm. these Antifa people and stuff like that hijacking the yeah. movement for them, for themselves. They're so mm -hmm. selfish. They make everything about themselves. When you have a real, a real conversation that we should have about there is something seriously wrong in this yeah. country. You know what I mean? And there's a problem, which whether you feel one way about it or the other, we got to address this. We got to solve this. And then you get these hey, folks coming out of their grandparents' you know, basements and parents' basements. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff and everything like that and, 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 and just hijacking the whole movement. Hijacking yeah. it for themselves. That's exactly oh, what's going man. on. And you, you take – What? I was going to say that's exactly what's going on. You take the focus off of what the, what the focus should be on. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden the narrative switches. It's not about that anymore. It yeah. gets lost in all this craziness. You know, it's just – you know, lived in kind of a fucked up world right now. And yeah, people, we are. I, I mean, you see it in the um that that chop zone, right? Yeah, in, in as, yeah. You know, yeah. and they, they'll spray paint Black Lives Matter on the on the things, so, but it's all white people. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, like they don't care, and and now they're creating this communist little commune or whatever there. But you see, what's happening is that the strong ones, the more violent ones, are the ones that rise to the top, and they mm -hmm. become the leaders of this movement. Through force, you know, they, they, they're just like the Nazis, just like the communists yeah. were back in the day. And you see now they're the ones that are now asking people for papers, you know, to come in and out. They're, they're, right. they're, uh, they're, they're what's the word, um, shaking up businesses, you know what I mean? Pay us protection. Yeah. You know, and, and here are these, they, they're just anarchists. They're just like, you know, commie friggin' anarchists. Hijacking an amazing, amazing moment in, in time. That we have to address some serious problems, and then these people have to hijack. Like I said, they have to hijack and make it all about themselves because everything's about me. You know what I mean? Yep. That's what it is. Everything's about. Oh, wait, we're not talking. We're not talking about me. You know? It's Sorry, that's my rant. No, you're fine. I was just no to wrap that up. I was just going to say I think most all Americans are on the same page with each other when they need to. You know, everyone supports the right to to protest, to get your voice out there, to peacefully assemble, to do all that stuff. And I think the majority of Americans also denounce the people who want to go out there and just create chaos yeah. and and destroy because that's not doing anything that's not helping any cause not bringing any attention to the stuff that needs to be brought attention to and that's the kind of shit that needs to be weeded out and yeah just a more coming together of the country which i i honestly feel if you turned off media and turned off social media a little bit you would realize that the country is a lot more like-minded in a lot of things than people think they are what they tell us they are so yeah. that's yeah. that's my little rant there too but <laughs> But uh, we'll, we'll get back to the comments. Oh, right. Sorry about that. We can, no, we can, no, we're fine. Dude. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. I could, I could personally talk about that for forever. So, but we don't, you yeah. know, we'll get back do to you, the fun stuff of the, of the, of yeah, what the yeah, world yeah. is. Yeah, let's get back to the so, fun shit. So, Billy, do you think that the time we are in now with, with, uh, Indiegogos and Kickstarters and the whole crowdfunding campaigns, do you think that it's, a, not a second wave, but just like how the early '90s were with creator owns. What's up, JoJo? Taking their own stuff, like whether yeah. they're, they're a newbies, and even newbies can just fucking rock and roll, you know, yep. and just go go to town. Like yep. we're back in that era of the early '90s. Yep, I don't think there's been there's a better time for independent creators to step forward and get their work out, especially that you have the Kickstarters, you have the Indiegogos. You know, we could work those, we could use those. Um, those platforms use social media for good, which it was supposed yeah. to be about. Right. Use it as a positive, because now even if you don't do, even it, say you 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 can have your first Indiegogo, right? And it doesn't even have to be to publish the book. 
Because the most expensive part about crowdfunding is printing the book and then packing it and shipping it. Right. Yeah. Your very first one, say you want to raise 500 bucks. Your very first one can just be a digital comic. Mm -hmm. Because there are Eisner awards for be for best web comic and best digital comic now. Digital comics are huge, so you can make a digital comic, you can crowdfund it, get it paid for, hey, and then you can go and then and then your next campaign is like, okay, we raised a thousand dollars. Thank you all. I was able to get my comic together. I was able to letter it, to color it. I was able to draw it, and and then get all that out to you guys. And now though, we're going to do the printed edition, and I guarantee right. you. 95% of those people who are backed you the first time will back the, the physical level of the book. And then you get mm -hmm. a whole lot more people to do it as well. Because word mm -hmm. of mouth happens when you deliver your, your first book. And if it's a digital copy of a digital comic, you deliver that book. Boom. You know what I mean? It's already out there. You're already a published. You're already a bona fide comic creator. And then mm -hmm. you next, and then get that book out. You know, as soon as it's done digitally, you ship it to everyone, and then you can promote it. That hey, the book's already done. The book is all done. So when this campaign's done, we're, we're asking for you guys to help us pay for the printing and for the shipping costs. And then when this book is done, uh, as soon as, as soon as the campaign ends, I'm shipping that book out. And that's, yeah, what that's the way to get in. Anyone can do it, man. You know, it, I mean, that'd be good too. You got to well, do yeah, yeah. You know, right, everything right. little trash, but yeah, right, yeah. There's you know, got to be some kind of good quality to it first. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's really, it re it really is cool. And like you know, Sean and I are both we're working on our own books, and we're gonna hit campaign, or you know, gonna do our our campaigns next year probably if we all stay on track. Him and I are kind of we're helping each other stay motivated and kick each other in the ass, and one of them one of one of us is slacking slacking off. But um, yeah, he he calls me a lazy Susie. But you know, it, it really is cool. Like the era that we're living in right now. Like, I don't think I, I would have never guessed, you know, five or 10 years ago, although I was out of comics at that time, but still, I would never have guessed that we would be living in an era now where the independent scene, so to speak, would be so self published and easier to get your books out there. As long as it is good quality, mm -hmm. that there's such a demand right now of fans out there looking for good quality books and it, you don't have to have the big two names attached to it or image attached to it or, you know, giant industry names. If it looks good and the story is good, people are going out and they're spending good money on this stuff. And it's, yeah, it's really awesome. Which it should be about the yep. art or, or the story, the character. Like, yeah, and, like, yes. and, you, and you don't have to raise $50,000. You don't have to raise $20,000. Right. You get your foot out and get that book out. And like I said, um, I think that I think going a digital way and release Jimmy Pomiata just released a, a book um, the, uh, that was just all digital mm -hmm. and was able to raise money to get this digital book out to people. And he did great with it. I mean, not everybody's Jimmy Pomiati, obviously, you know, but he's no. able to do it. Not even no. yeah. Van Skyver making almost a million dollars now. Yeah. And yeah. I also have to say, uh, Ryan yeah. Kincaid, who, who's in the chat, this guy is phenomenal. He's an amazing oh, Ryan. artist. Like he he's 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 kicking so much ass. Like his I got his, his sketchbook. His fan base. Oh yeah, he's super talented, yep. and it makes me sick. But now nah, he's the best. <laughs> he's the best. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's one of those guys where you're just like, wow, you're doing it right, man. You're doing it right. So, <clears throat> after the success of she, when did you uh, like? Where where do we pick up from there with you with your career? Yeah. So she. So I do she for about ten years. We, uh, I pro, I think I published close to a hundred issues of she, but a bunch of other issues. We had a bunch of other books we did, and uh, sold about three and a half million comics. Crazy. Wow. So, I married a real smart woman. <laughs> my was awesome. the art, who's way smarter than me. She put money away for the retirement, put money away for the kids' college, and uh, I pretty much was able to do whatever I want now. You know, yeah. So I got to do some Marvel stuff, a lot of DC stuff. Um, what gets hard though, when you do Marvel and DC is first of all, you never make as much, half as much money unless you like Scott Snyder or, uh, Greg Capullo or right. like what Ethan did with Jeff Johns and you're big upper, upper echelon. You, you never get the money. You never get paid as much as if you do with your own book. Do you know what I mean? Your own created book. Yeah, uh, right. but, but, I, but like I said, we're doing all right. You know, I've been doing this a long time, so it's fun. And then I just got the bug and I just missed, 
I just missed doing she. I needed the story and I wanted the story. You know, I, I had the story in my head, but I was terrified of crowdfunding because it's hard. It's a lot of work. Um, That's what I finally, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, right. And, and you got to do it right, though, too. You got to do it right. So, um, but I was really intimidated and was like, you're going to do great. You're going to do great. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's going to remember. So we did Zombie Sama last year and Zombie Sama did great. I think we did $74,000 or $70,000, 70, $70, I think. Nice. 74 all told. Then we did She this year. And now we're, we're, at, we're over $178,000 on She. We're going, you know, um, I can't believe it. You know, it's, it's unbelievable what people... Hey Ryan, good to see you. <laughs> and tell her, tell her I said hello. Um, but uh, it's 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 incredible how people do remember the character, and they do. I think what they remember though is all the passion that went into it from everybody on who's worked on she in the past. Yeah. And I needed a good story though that was uh, that would interest me. So I said, you know what? It's been twenty five years. Why don't I age the character twenty five years? I age of 20 years, though, not 25. Once we, we start at 25, I'm like, ah, let's age of 20 years. So uh, she's in her mid 40s. Uh, she's got a 15 year old daughter. Her warrior days are far behind her. And then finally, it all comes back. But I love the idea of a comic character growing up, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and make her a mature woman. Um, and she's beautiful. Like I said, I've been with my wife for uh, almost 30 years, to over 30 years, and she's never looked more beautiful to me. So, yeah, cool. awesome. you know yeah I mean? so why not have it? You know, and 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 we had the jokes like she's trying to costume. I was like, oh my god, she rips the costume. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, twenty years and and one child later, forget it. And uh, yeah. that's our Indiegogo campaign, our rough cut. We're gonna be ending the rough cut because we got to do our numbers because it's going to press end of this mm -hmm. week. And then the blue, and then the the pure line edition, which is the finishes, the final black and white of the finishes. Uh, that goes to press next week. So we'll be ending nice. them. Uh, but I think they look terrific. I think those books look terrific. Tomorrow I'm going to update it with more images and stuff, though. Because I don't have yep. it with me. I mean, I have it on my computer and stuff. But This is the cover I got. Because I just there was something about that silver that looked. Yeah, that one came yeah, out. I always loved the red. But like when I saw the silver, I was like, oh, man, it just looks really cool. Yeah, that's uh, Wes Hartman colored that. He did an incredible job. Yeah, it looks awesome. looks great. Yeah, and I'm so excited about the rough cut because just some of the, the penciled versions. I don't know if I can click on this. Nope. Some of the penciled versions, just the pencils themselves, just look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I love your line work, just the way you shade. It, it just has a very appealing look with just just the pencils. And I'm extremely excited about that version of the book coming out. No, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I feel like you know I've I'm, I've reconnected with an old friend. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and absolutely. And I can't wait for this book. And and then we launch at the end of August, Hotaru. And the goal is get Hotaru out by the end of October. And then November, we launch the uh, that secret project. That's yeah. That's yeah. the making. I'm, uh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> excited wait, about can't that. Wait. <laughs> um, getting back to Shi real quick. Uh, so what was the inspiration for that character? Like, where did that come from? Where did the story come from? Her name is named after my college professor who since passed away, Anna Ishikawa, um, who's a real tough woman. She was uh, she was in internment camps or World War II when she was a kid, uh, an incredible artist, incredible teacher, like I said, tough as nails. And I just got into, in college, I got into, um, what you call it, art? I got into uh, Japanese woodblock prints. And, yeah. and, I, and I always love samurai films. You know, Kira Kurosawa is my favorite director. Seven Samurai is my favorite film. Uh, that and Adventure of the Robin Hood, go figure. And, and, uh, and I just got into it. And the more I got into the into the into the woodblocks, then I started really getting into the history of Japan. And the character started off as a male character, and then it just went into um, it. It just it just went into uh, develop. Wow, this might work better as a female. I think if, if, if this was a woman, this character, cause it's so much harder for women because women are so repressed in Japan. And, oh, okay. um, and that's kind of, that's how it started. And the story just took a life of its own. It really did. The more history that I laced into it, the more I was able to come to bring out. And I sort of, I sort of researching the Sohei warriors, which were the warrior monks of medieval, medieval Japan, which she's a direct descendant of. 
because the majority of them weren't monks at all. They were just samurai whose heads were shaved and they wore white cowls so they could gotcha. bring more money into the into the uh, the temples, which were like you know their homes. So uh, <clears throat> it was it was uh, yeah, Adventures of Robin Hood. There goes Marco Lopez gets you know it, you get it. Marco. <laughs> Aaron Flynn. Smart man. Yep. yep. So uh, that's you know uh, that's how it happened, and and the story just kept going, and then we would go back in time and tell stories on World War II and medieval Japan, and uh, and now we're going to the future. Now we're twenty five years forward, and it's great. I love it. I, I can identify with her more. And then you have her little snot nosed metalhead shit daughter, you know, little snot nosed, <laughs> you know. But she's adorable. But she's a pisser too. So. Yeah, because I think on the on your campaign page, don't you have a, a few of the first pages on there that you can actually read? Yeah, you can read those. And those are actually been yeah. – yeah, the book isn't out yet. The book would have been out in March or April because of COVID. It wouldn't have been out in March. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I took that time, and I'm like – there was just – there was literally 25 pages I was – I did not think were up to par. And we literally had them all redrawn and recolored, everyone. And they look, you know, they, it looks amazing now. Now it looks incredible. It's, it's, it just looks fantastic. And I'm so proud of it. And um, working with Stephen Peros, my writing partner, and uh, two great artists uh, who are my finishers off of my pencils, um, uh, Ricardo Silva and then Guardiano Lima. Oh. Uh, amazing. Oh, my God. He's so great. He, way better artist than I am, I'll tell you that. <laughs> way better. Wow. So he takes my little crappy pencils, you know, you know <laughs> and he's just turned into beautiful works of art. So it's, it's well, been a great ride. Great ride. It is awesome when you have a, a, a really good team put together on your book and you have a good finisher, you know, you know, can bring your style out. They can uh, add to it and just, yeah. you know, it, one thing that I learned when, you know, cause when you're growing up, you just look at the art and you always think it's just the artist, you know, for the longest time until you get to know what comics are, how they're actually made. And you never really understand how much a good anchor can bring everything together. And yeah. it really becomes more of the team look of the art and not just the penciler. You yeah. know, yeah. when you can get the, when you get the team, when you get the penciler, the anchor and the colorist and all those guys are working in unison together. I mean, there's some, fantastic teams out there that can just really make beautiful 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 work and oh, yeah. I, so absolutely. far i've loved what you've put together with she from what i've yeah. seen from just the campaign i mean it's looking it looks absolutely gorgeous the art oh, does thank you i i love that if i could share my screen i could probably pull up the uh <clears throat> some of the the, the, the finishes you know uh um, should i would say you should be able to yeah let me see let me try it i'm sure i can i'll go to uh go to my drop box you know okay uh, so you should be able to. Yeah, yeah let me see. No, I'll I'll go. Sure I can. I'll go to oh, uh, what I do. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, there. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I don't see it yet. Oh, I'm on. I'm on Twitter. It's on Twitter. Sorry. Let me get out of there. Oh, Hang on. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I went on Twitter. I just hit. I was going to go in the Dropbox, and then for some reason Twitter came up, and the video was running on Twitter. Right? Is yeah. that the? Was that Twitter yeah. you running on? Yeah, must we're be. everywhere. We're everywhere. We're like we are everywhere. Well, I apologize. Let me let me find that page. And uh again, guys, I apologize. Oh, no you're worries, fine. No worries. Who's uh who's an inker from like back in the day that you would love to have ink your stuff like Terry Austin or you know, Michael Bear is the best inker I I ever worked with. And I, I wouldn't want to work with anyone else. I mean, he just brought she to such an incredible le level. Um, mm -hmm. now I got the thing with Gardenio is that, you know, if you see my pencils, you might be like, Oh my God, this is garbage, but he takes it. And I call, we call him a finisher because yeah. we were doing inks and I just didn't like the way the inks lo were looking, you know, because my pencils are very detailed, I guess, or, or I do a lot of shading and stuff. So I'm like the hell with the pencil with, with and, and the hell with finishing it, um, with inks, let's finish it with pencils. You know, and you got to yeah. see this. You got to see this work. Let me, let me, uh, I'll see if I can share the screen now. Boom. Chrome tab. Chrome tab. Heck yeah. All right. There it is. All right, cool. Hold yes, on a second. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, all right. So there's a Chrome tab. Why can't I, honestly, why can't I pull this up? I see it. Let me see. 
Keep talking. I'm gonna see. It's right. not my show, so I don't know if I can do it. I know you when popped, I want it, I can. You you popped it up. I just gotta uh, for some reason I don't yeah, know you why. You got to add it to the stream. Yep. Hold on a second. There we go. I figured it there out. <laughs> so I mean, but look at that because now when Brian Miller comes oh, in and Brian no. Miller colors it, it's got a beautiful watercolor effect. Yeah. You know, and I love it because it's so different. It's it's different than what other people. What most comics are, you know, it gives it a really everything. nice watercolor effect. It looks like it just looks beautiful. And then let's see. Uh, I, I look at that. That's that part yeah. of the, the pure line. This is the art for the pure line edition with the finish. Oh, and I just love that awesome. softness. I'm like, you know what? The heck with inks. We're not going to ink. I want you to draw it over my pencils. I want you to finish. I want you to add your stamp to it like you're inking it. And look at it's just so smooth and. And so it's just gorgeous. Yeah, no, that looks that looks awesome. That is some just that fantastic. Is very real. So that's that. So I'm pumped. So is the is the entire book uh, watercolors or is it still? Well, it's digital. It's different. digital. Brian Miller, it's, right, okay. right. but the, it looks like watercolor because there's no black lines around everything. Right. You know, okay, I got your you. Hand, yep. Sean, right, and there's no black line around your hand. There's no black right. line oh. around my head. You know, it's right. So, it, this gives it a more realistic almost and again you could play with things so it looks more 3d sure you know, yeah. it's nice it looks really natural real organic if you will and trust no, me i love ink awesome. comics i love inkers i love you know the marvel stuff from the 60s and 70s i love that stuff but i just think for she we've been you we've been going from pencils to colors i've been doing it since 95 Oh wow! So I've been doing it for a long time, and I just like it's just part of our she look, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very it, consistent. It, yeah, and it gives you know yeah. it, it gives a different uh, it gives a different look to the book than what you see, which is which is which is awesome. And if you can do it in a like the first time I saw anybody doing that was I think uh, Michael Turner and Peter Steigerwald. Yeah, sure. I yeah. Up yeah. The name right, Steigerwald. Yeah, that was the yeah. first time I saw anybody taking pencils and coloring it, or maybe that's just the first time I like was paying attention to it. But when you can do that, you can do it in a way it gives a really interesting look that's unique, yeah, but also beautiful at the same time. If that makes sense, you know. Yeah, you just, like need a really good, life, but... you just need a really good colorist, and there's guys like I said, like Brian Miller, a Hi-Fi, uh, Wes Hartman can do it. Uh, who colors a lot of my covers and stuff? He, he's fantastic too. So that's there's just certain uh, you, you need a colorist that knows to do that and works. Right. Guys were painters, you know. They were you know Brian Miller was a was a painter before he did comic book colors. You know he's a trained, yeah. oh, yeah. trained artist that could paint with a brush like you wouldn't believe. Right. So, yeah, I'm sure that definitely helps out. On the other hand, we have we have Maria Laura Sanapo who's doing Miss Fury, and because that's oh, a gold yeah. book too, that's going inks to colors. Right, old school. I mean, really, really great yeah. old school stuff. Um, and it's just beautiful, dude. Oh my god, so proud of it. I'm so proud to be working on that to bring Miss Fury back too. Yeah, from what I've seen, that book that looks really good too. And I caught uh, some of the live shows you guys were doing when you were doing the launch and just talking about the behind the scenes and everything. Yeah. And maybe just being the age I am, I never even I never heard of the character until you started. Until you had the did they come to you, or did you get the i the IP? No, I was, I was talking to Anthony Mark Marquez, who's the um, Marquis Anthony Marquis, who's now the proprietor of the of the um, Hubert School, and Anthony okay. was an editor over there. And I love Anthony; I've been friends with him for a long time. And he, I we were just talking about Dynamite Books. We're hanging out at a convention, and uh, he was sitting right across from me. And I said, "You know, I want to do Miss Fury. I want to do Miss Fury for you guys because they published Miss Fury." And he's like, "We're thinking about doing Miss Fury." I'm like, "I'm doing it. I want to do it." And uh, <laughs> and that's how it started. That was two years ago. Then the Joy Division was a story. Uh, we had Emma Cuber was supposed to draw it the first time, but we were all ran into scheduling conflicts. It was just it just never worked out. Uh, and then by the time we decided to redo it again last summer, uh, Maria Laura Sanapo, who I love her work, was available. And it's it, it and we right. wanted to to do it as a hundred page Indiegogo premiere format hardcover, you know, and give and give June Tarpe Mills the proper respect and the character Miss Tarpe Mills June Tarpe Mills is Miss Fury's creator, um, and to give her the respect she deserves and bring that book back as a love letter to her and her creation and uh, 
that to have all the original characters in it, the books, the story slots perfectly into Miss Fury's timeline, into the original continuity. Nice. And uh, it's just cool, man. It's 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 great, and it's coming out fantastic. Yeah. I'm just so proud of it. I really yeah. am. That's really cool to to be able to bring do. Bring up all Marco's like comment like, again, real quick. Which one? Oh yeah, yeah hold on. Uh, Marco, yeah, bring up his comment again. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, Marco, that's so funny. Somebody had mentioned we were on a show. So it, it, the weird thing is, is that Team Fury, we call it, you know, it's all women and me. I didn't, I never realized that. <laughs> because I just wanted to work with Maria. And we, Debbie and I had met Maria about two years ago at a convention. And we became fast friends with her and her husband, Marco Santucci. And we always wanted to work with her. Um, so that was a given when it was a vet that I, I had mentioned, well, what about Maria Laura? And they're like, she's finishing up a Vampirella book, Vampirella, Red Sonia, Betty and Veronica book. So um, I'm like, and she, she loved it. And she wanted to come on board. And then her colorist was Ceci Dela Cruz. I don't know Ceci. So I didn't know if it was Ceci Dela Cruz or Ceci Dela Cruz. So I didn't know if it was a male or a female. And then Asha Kishna, who's doing our variant cover, uh, Ash is another amazingly uh, amazing young artist who Debbie and I met in Holland. She's a Dutch artist, and we just talked to her with friends, and, and she's just got a perfect style. Her style is very reminiscent of the 40s. Yeah. You know, she can capture that 40s style, but almost with a manga touch to it, feel to it. It's beautiful, her work. And then uh, Mindy Lopkin, who's our editor and designer on She, um, I asked her if she wanted to do it. Uh, so she's like, yeah. So she's gonna letter it, and she does the page designs and all that. You know, all the the book, the jacket designs and everything. And it just ended up that that they're all women. It's <laughs> very cool, <laughs> very cool. Awesome. right? <laughs> that is really cool. And and the art for it, I mean, the color, everything looks great. The, the art, the colors. Yeah. This is another very just gorgeous looking book you guys are working on. It's just it's pretty incredible all the stuff that you're putting out lately, and just how quality wise, you know, just how it's coming out. Yeah. Well, it feels great to be back. I got to tell you and doing, doing stuff that I can sit. This is not creator owned, obviously, because Tarpe Miller right. created it, yeah. but no one's really wrote her in the spirit of Tarpe Mills. I feel since June stopped doing it in 1952. Wow. You know, so I, I feel it's a great honor. I mean, I, I'm a student of, of Miss Fury. I met with, uh, her nephew, her surviving June Tarpe Mills is, uh, Nephew Bill Finn has become a great friend of mine. He's a great supporter of the book. And um, Trina Robbins, who's probably the, the foremost authority on Miss Fury okay. and, and on Tarpe Mills, she gave us her blessing. We had breakfast with her at San Diego Comic Con this year, Deb and I. So that was great. And uh, it's just, there's just something real special about it, you know? I, feel, I really feel in my heart there's just something so special about this book. And it's an incredible story. It really is. It's kick ass, it's a golden age adventure. But it's um, it's it's a uh, <clears throat> it's it's a it's a real story that's based on one of the darkest times in history during the Holocaust and one of the darkest episodes of the Holocaust, which was the Joy Division, and that was basically the Nazis taking these beautiful young Jewish women, some of them as young as twelve years old, and literally turning them into prostitutes for the SS. Wow. So they, and, and many times they, they suffered a fate worse than death because they were repeatedly, yeah. raped. you know, just the horrible. And I want to tell that story and how they turn it on the Nazis and they become like a female and a female and glorious bastards. I was just going to say, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, so the Nazis. And then they, and then she ends up creating the black furies. And that's what I want to be. The spinoff series is the black furies and how they hunt the Germans in Germany. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. I, <clears throat> Just recently, I actually talked to a guy. Um, he's a World War II vet. Uh, he's 100 years old. His name is Ivan. Wow. God bless and, him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and this dude is he, he's sharp as a tack still. Uh, I actually met him through a guy that I work with and went over to his house, and he has a scrapbook. He was he actually um, – I can't remember exactly what his title was, but they would put, uh, like, telephone lines when they would go into, uh, into war, and they set everything up and whatever. Yeah. But he – they took over this castle that was uh, one of Hitler's castles or whatever. And he found this pin and it was a pin that they would specifically give to the young girls that they would recruit to try to, um, 
to free to whatever the oh, area yeah, nation yeah. or race or whatever. Yeah. And he, he was showing me this pen. And he's like, yeah, you know, like we found this. And he was like, they would actually hand these out to all, all the women out there, you know, to pretty much, pretty much what you just said, you know, like that's, it just popped in my head that you said that. I was like, it's really coincidence, but this dude he is an awesome dude. Awesome. You know, and just a spitfire of a man and so much respect, just being able to talk to him and be in his presence for a little bit, just for someone that dealt with that firsthand. Um, Pretty incredible. Yeah, guy's a hero, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A real hero. Uh, Marco asked a question here that I was actually going to get to, but since he asked this, we're just going to bring it up. Um, <clears throat> he said, I'm going to ask another question because I know Billy is a World War II buff and Sergeant Rock. Have you ever thought of putting out your own Sergeant Rock type and exploring the further stories you wanted to do with him at DC and maybe stories a company like that probably wouldn't let you do? And I was actually going to ask him about Sergeant Rock, so this kind of gets right into that. Oh yeah, I have a story um, that that I call War No More that I pitched them and everyone loved it until it got to the end. And uh, for one reason or another, the one, one of the people there it deals with the Holocaust as well um, and the last battle. Um, it's based on a true story that was in uh, Yank Magazine, where it was the only time the U.S. Army and the German Army fought on the same side. And that was against the SS at a castle in Austria, which wow. I wanted to be Hans von Hammer's castle. <clears throat> now maybe with this, some people aren't no longer there at DC, so maybe I, there's a, that there's new life into that story. And I'd love just to write it and get like, oh man, if I get someone like uh, Lee Weeks or some brilliant guy to draw it, holy crap, that would be great. Uh, Lee Weeks, yeah, yeah. So um, he's a hell of an illustrator. Oh my yeah, god, yeah, dude's killing it, yeah, absolutely. But uh, if I could do that, I would love to, to tell that story. Uh, but um, if DC doesn't do it, I, I have another character. I call him Corporal Kilroy. When Kilroy was here, you know, it's called Kilroy was yeah. here. And it's a story. Like right it. And I'll just put Cor Kil Kilroy in there in that story and tell those stories. I have a uh, – in 2021, I'm planning on doing – I don't know if I'll do it because it gets so busy. Uh, right. A big graphic novel called Rejected. And the logo is like a big rejected stamp. And it's the greatest comic stories you thought you'd never read. And it's all of my <laughs> friends had these amazing comic book pitches that for one godly reason or another, they were passed on. Right. The stories are brilliant. And I would just love it. Like I have some Batman stories. So my son and I created a character called Night Flyer. You know? Right. Cool. Yeah. And, and right. It's gonna be, that's going to be the stories for him. I have uh, Captain America stories, and I have another character that I want. To, that'll be the character to tell you know to do that stories. I have my friends who have these great stories. I'm like, create your own character. Don't yep. give it that money. Don't give it to DC. Don't give it to Marvel. Create your own character, and let's do this. Let's publish an anthology of say mm -hmm. 10, 20 page stories. Do a two hundred page book. So just you know, awesome. page is issue. Yeah. Rejected the greatest comic stories you thought you'd never read. So. That sounds that, awesome. That's an awesome concept. It really is because there, there are so many pitches that get rejected that most audience will never know because obviously the, the creator is going to keep it to themselves. Yeah. The, the cool thing is you can take that pitch and you can just switch the characters around and, and create your own book. That's it. And, you know, there's been so many examples of that throughout history and it's created, you know, some really awesome characters. In some ways, it's almost a blessing in disguise when you think about it because it is your own property instead of selling that book to, you know, DC or Marvel and, you know, losing all the rights or whatnot. Yeah. I think that's an awesome idea, man. I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. <clears> that said, <throat> I'd like to buy, I'd like to um, license Sergeant Rock the Lost Battalion from DC because they had put it out as a um, 10th anniversary edition, but the numbers were so low that it wasn't printed. It got caught up a lot of their books that month. It happened to their January books. <laughs> so I'm um, like, you know what? What if I say I want to license it? How much to license it? Oh, you printed. Do I gotta buy two thousand books? Well, right. it'll be worth it because I'll buy them all. And then if they say, "How are you gonna sell them?" I'm like, I don't know. I'll, I'll do a Kickstarter or something. <laughs> right. And then I'll do a Kickstarter of that Sergeant Rock 10th anniversary book. No, that'd be that'd be. Sick. Or Indiegogo. I'm probably gonna do Indiegogo. I don't know if I'm gonna do Kickstarters anymore. Um, I was gonna ask you that. Yeah, I'm a big I'm... fan of Indiegogo. They can. Yeah. Plus, my wife is gonna leave me. I think you know, as you gotta see how crazy she's going because she's doing all the surveys and she's putting everything together and she's like. I need a I need a glass of wine. I need a glass. <laughs> of wine. So I think I'm gonna do a perk on it's just ten bucks. Buy Debbie a glass of wine. There you go. 
<laughs> Buy a lot of wine. It does all the work, printing it out, printing all the labels out, organizing it, all that. So I think I'm going to do it next week. We're going to do a, we're going to do a perk. It says, "Buy Debbie a glass of wine." And plus, it's like happening it. to our dog, and her dog had to have surgery today. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a, it's been a terrible, terrible couple of weeks. Well, let's make that a perk and let's push it. You That'd know, be fun. You're you're a lot of wine. A glass of wine. You don't get anything but the satisfaction of buying Debbie a glass of wine. There you go. <laughs> it, Sounds like a good time to me. Yeah, you can count on my ten bucks. That's for sure. No, well, thank you. Um, with uh, it's one of the cool things. I just like to keep bouncing back here because my just my childhood. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that's in the chat. When we have guests on, like Billy, or you know, when we talk to Brett. We're talking to people that we followed as kids, you know, and I never really thought I'd have a chance to actually sit here and talk and, you know, ask questions or whatnot. So I'm just going to dive back into my childhood a little bit. And one of the things I really loved about she was watching her pop up and all the crossovers that you guys <laughs> or that you did in the 90s. Yeah. Um, how did some of those come about? How fun were they to do? You know, it was I pretty much did a crossover with anyone who asked because why not? It was <laughs> fun. It's yeah, fun. Sure, right? You know what I mean? It, it's fun. Let's do it. Um, it was uh, it was just like a lot of times happening in bars. We're hanging out in the bar, like in Chicago Con or something. We're all just yeah. drinking and stuff. And like, dude, oh, my God. It, it would help me so much. It would, And a lot of them were books that were small books. I mean, we did some big crossovers. We had, you know, Wolverine, She, Daredevil, yeah. She. Um, the stuff with Top Cow, of course, we did. But um, – some of the you know smaller guys are like, oh, I would love to do. I love that character. Do you think I do a crossover? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> um, that's awesome. Not? Yeah, that's really fucking cool. Really cool. Really cool. So it'd be great if I could help someone else out and we can get that character on there with she. You know, I didn't really get. I don't even know if I got paid. You know, but wow. uh, I'm the luckiest son of a bitch in the world. You know, so why not spread that? Why not spread that good karma and that's share cool. if you can. Go ahead. And, uh, and we did a lot. I think someone said it was the most crossed over character, <laughs> independent character uh, ever or in the 90s. Wow. Yeah, why not? Sure, go ahead, do it. You can have her. Just don't, you know, I had parameters, of course. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we got, now we're, we're, we're pulling back on that. We're not going to do that so much. So, right, yeah, just pull back. Just have my, which that which was Joe's that. next question. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that book I want to do in, Jan, in, in November is going to be the Destroy All Monsters of Independent Comics. So I'm going to be calling in a lot of favors to, from friends. Nice. Nice. So. nice. Do you have a favorite crossover from that time? Or is it just kind of all? I, know, I think the side blade, she really was so much fun. I mean, we were just yeah. capturing magic. I think when Mark did side blade, she, he did side blade, she, then I did she side blade. Mm -hmm. So I think. Spawn might have been the number one book. Number two was Lady Death, the uh, swimsuit issue. <laughs> number well, three course. was Sideblade She from Top Cow. This just July 1995 or 96, 95. And then wow. number four was She Senryaku, number one. We beat every other yeah. major publisher, all their books. We blew them away. And then in That's August awesome. the next year, the next month, August, when I did Sideblade, I did She Sideblade. The second half of the book, it was the same thing. You know, it, just, it was great, man. I think it was the number three book for the month of August. See, yeah, that's that the great one. Times. Great yeah, times. Yeah, times of comics. Oh, yeah. Senryaku number two. No, no, that, that was number two, so the numbers dropped a little bit for Senryaku number two. But that was a number seven book or something. Crazy times, man. Crazy times. I mean, it, it was such a great era in comic books, too. I mean, just that, that early to mid-90s when it just kind of like had that explosion of, of talent and and – Stories and characters and all that. I mean, that that's still my favorite era. Obviously, I mean, that's what I grew up on. But that's still my favorite era of comics. Yeah, I mean, all of us, all of us independent guys, we're outlaws. You know, yeah. who the hell yeah. are you? me, Brian Polito. You know, who the hell are you to tell us what to do? Yep. Yeah. Joe Casada, Jimmy Pommy, yeah, like we're doing. No, we're doing what we want. Jeff Smith, Terry Moore. Yeah. You know, we're like, no, we're doing whatever we want. Well, you can't do that. Why not? Well, no one's done it. Right. Oh well. You know. Okay. Well, screw you. <laughs> you, know, so, yeah. you know, so that was <laughs> love it. Like I said, it was it was good times, man. It was good times. So great. So did what you was uh, the most like wildest okay. uh licensee that ever came up to you? And you're like, no, nah, I'm gonna pull back on this one. This is kind of wild <laughs> and might get me in trouble. <laughs> 
Oh, let me think. Uh, shit, dude. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything weird like, yeah, we're not doing that. I don't think there's anything like that that I know of. I got I, I to comb my hair. Look at me. I, got, I haven't got a haircut. I'm like, you know, I'm going to just be a hippie. This quarantine, man, it's horrible. <laughs> I hate hippies. Yeah. Like Grand Olin, that hippie, if he's watching. I used to have really, really long hair until I started to lose it, and then I had to get, you know, get rid of it as much as I could. But I used to be in a band, so that was. There you go. I had yeah, to have instant one. cover band, yeah. so like he had instant, to have it. Instant cover band. That's exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what it was. Nice. The Wham UK cover band. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, I don't know if I could live that one down. Uh, we'll spread the rumor. Yeah, just spread the rumor. See what happens. Why yeah. not? Oh shoot. Um, man, I had something. I was going to ask something, Sean, and then you asked something, and then I totally lost it. Damn it. That's, Getting that's, old what, happens, man. that's what happens. Yeah. Uh. That's why with my ADHD, that's why, I, you know, if you see my show, I'm always drawing too, but just because I got to get work done. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know, know how you do it. Rude. It's just, you know. I don't know how you do it, man. I can't I can't really draw and talk at the same time. I, I can't do it. It's so, one or the other will suffer. Either the conversation will really suck, or I will just stay on the same like little line or little render for forever. So more power to you that you can do that. I can't. I've thought about it before, but hey, Sean, what's your shirt say? Is it John Lennon? Yeah. No, oh, there you go. It's my, it's my nice. pops. So. Hey, did you see uh, yesterday that movie? Yesterday. Yeah, I saw it. Ah, uh, I loved it. Yeah. I love movies like that. Go I back. That was cool. Yeah, it does. And when he met John Lennon, oh, spoilers, whatever. Oh, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, I hear some people give it shit, but, you know, I don't care what they think. So, like, yeah. it's good to me. There you go. Is that the one that just came out where um, nobody heard of the Beatles before? Yeah, except for yeah. There's yeah. a world without the Beatles. Yeah. 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 I, I actually, I wanted to see it. I have not seen that yet, but I wanted to. I thought it looked I good. I think Plus it's on, I, like, HBO or, or it's on demand. Like one, like, yeah, it's on demand. Like, Definitely like, on demand. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge Beatles fan, so, I mean, anything with their music I, in it, I would definitely check out. I actually got this. My brother-in-law used to work for McFarland, and this is I'm one saying, of let me, the uh, pro let me blow you up here. Hold it up. There you go. Oh, let me get this for a second. Like Yellow Submarine? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to show this, but oh well. Yeah, so that's really cool. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to show. But oh well, uh, that is awesome. Marco says, talk to him about this. Never knew this about Billy. He also wrote, wrote produced, and directed the award-winning short film "Some Trouble of a Serious Nature," and yeah. cannot wait to make a feature. I want to know if he still has plans to direct in future a feature one day. I Great question. I totally do. I have a story right now. It's it was it was in Zombie Som. It was in Zombie Som. It's a backup preview. It's called the Boys of. It's called Company Z, and uh, that's my zombie story. I've always wanted to tell, and that's what I hope to be my my very first feature film. And I would tell people in Hollywood, you know, I mean, we we have a film deal. I just have to check it because I'm wondering if it's even expired. To be honest with you, and that's something we've been doing this week. Um, Oh, but I would tell people in Hollywood, I would get in fights with them. And I'm like, listen, I'll make this movie 30 years from now myself. If you don't make this movie now, this is around 1998, 2000, you know, in the mid 2000s, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, 2010, whatever. I'm like, you don't make this movie. So I'll make it, I'll make it 30 years from now myself. That's all I would say. So I want it done right, you know, and, 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 yeah. and you got to do this, you know, right. And, and I'd rather not there be a movie then unless you, if you're going to make it crap. And there are so many stupid people out there so much nepotism. they lie they just oh my god it's it's terrible it's just the snakes you know they really so, also yeah. everyone's uncle bob or uncle charlie got him a job you know mm -hmm. but we'll see we'll see we've got uh i got a cut actually in the past three days or past weekend two producers actually got in touch with me inquiring about the rights to she that's why we started on friday i started looking back into the into the paperwork to see if this contract is still viable. You know, that was actually, I heard from my producer since last year. So I don't know if, well, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it's expired. So we'll see now, especially now with the new Kickstarter and Indiegogo, 
you know, it, there's a lot of heat on it, it seems. You're getting a lot of eBay orders now. Yeah. It's amazing when you start doing a book again, how everybody, you know, it gets popular again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I was going to be my next question is if anybody was, if there was any plans of trying to make a she feature film. But um, on that aspect, I think with these Kickstarters, or Indiegogos, I should say, they really do, it It regenerizes, or regener rejuvenates, Rejuvenates, yeah. Rejuvenates. Yep. Is that a word? This word. Rejuvenate. Um, today, Junior. I, I, yeah, t -t 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 today, Junior. The original audience, and I think <clears throat> not only are you bring a new audience in, but you are really giving the old audience something that they've been waiting to see for a long time, and that will energize them into wanting to go back and look at all the old books that maybe have been on their shelf for a while. You know, I mean, that's kind of what I've done. And actually, sad story. I had she books. And I don't know what the fuck happened to them. I went into my collection today. I went into my collection today because I was like, I'm gonna pull these out and I'm gonna hold them up in the live stream and I'm gonna be like, yeah, you know, this or that. But I moved like, I moved so much in a 15 year span of time at one point, and I had my comic book collection. It was pretty big, you know. You try to take it, you can't always take it. Some might brag about it. Go. Yeah, but I, not me. Um, and I, I, I've lost so many comics over the years, and those must have been some. I was so disappointed. I was so, so disappointed because I like had the crossover, like the, the she Cyberly crossover. I had, I had she number one, and I can't find them anymore. So, yeah, sad story for me today. I'm sorry, I was not, yeah, sorry, thank you. Bro. I appreciate that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, it is, it's, it's really cool to see guys like you and, and Ethan Van Skyver go back to books that they did in the 90s and bring them back and continue the story. And you just get a whole new audience and you bring that old audience in and yeah, it, it's really cool. And it's, we're living in a great time right now for characters. And it's awesome to see these characters coming back. Uh, same thing with Dan Frega bringing black yeah. flag back. You know, you got so many awesome old characters that we all grew up with are coming back new stories, original creators. It's just, yeah, extremely exciting. Yeah, it is. It really is, man. Oh, what about she animated film? Yeah. That's, That'd be an awesome you know, idea. I think I'm not sure if the animated rights or that's why I have to check. I'm not sure because I, I got that question too about it. Well, are the animation rights the same as the live action rights? And I don't think they are. I think the animation yeah. rights are the animation rights. Okay. So, <coughs> I'll know in the next few weeks. It's just I gotta take all that, I gotta take that contract, I gotta make copies of it all, and then I gotta send it to my lawyer for him to look at. Got you. Know. you. Always have a good lawyer, regardless of whatever field you're in <coughs> or, or anything. I learned that at the age of 14. <laughs> <laughs> good advice from Sean. Oh, you like it was on fire or summer? <laughs> Alle allegedly. 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 Everything's well, allegedly. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sean was a flasher, too, you know? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Uh Oh, that's great, man. You guys are a pisser. No, yes. <laughs> we're a bunch of clowns. Again, we're, we're just a bunch of uh, comic geeks, comic art geeks, and talking to guys like you, it's a pleasure. Oh, man. Like I said, anytime, man. Anytime. That's awesome. Ne next show that I'm at, that I, that you're there, uh, beer on me or whatever, whiskey or whatever you drink. I, whatever you drink. I'm, tell you, I'm looking at, you know, as of now, the New York Comic Con still on, and so is Baltimore. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. That's kind of dicey. I'm kind of dicey about New York. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, New York. But, New but York. then again, you, you you never know. You know, it might be something that the industry needs. You know, it could be sure. good good for it. I personally, yeah. I miss. You know, I get inspired at conventions. You know, I start talking to fans or hanging out with my mm -hmm. buddies because I can imagine. you know you, you you really live an isolated existence. You know, I'm either up here on my studio. At the art table here, drawn, or I'm back there uh, on the other side of that writing, you know, you know, and I and you don't have time to talk to people when you. Well, at least when I write, I can't, you know. Sure. When yeah. I draw, oh, yeah. I can talk when I draw, but then you get too distracted. You got to just keep, you know, you got to work. <clears throat> so uh, that's what's great about the comic conventions because that's when you can reconnect with everybody, you know, your buddies. Get energized, get inspired by everybody. Yeah, 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 you really do, and it's different. Can, can you know, you could be at the bar. Hanging out with fans you saw earlier and just talking to them mm -hmm. and they just start asking you questions about comics in general. Or, you know, like last year I was at uh South Carolina Con hanging out with Scott Snyder till like nice. Oh, nice. Just talking about, you know, 
comics, you know, in Christmas time, I, I'm sorry, Halloween, me, Jimmy, Pamiati, Frank Thierry, Amanda Connor did a show up in Nashville, New Hampshire, um, hanging out with, uh, with Fraga and Sean Gordon Murphy, man. Just talking yeah, about the stories team. and art and, you know, it was, it was awesome. You get back, you're like, yeah, you know, just yeah, yeah, inspired. Yeah, yeah. I never was one to get jealous. You know, I got, you know, some people get jealous of other success. I get, I really get right. inspired by it. Yeah. Yeah, I really yeah. do. It's that creative energy. You get in the yeah. same room or just, you know, same, a conversation with other, you know, it, it can be infectious. So yeah. it, it that, that's what's awesome. Uh, same thing like Sean and I do with each other. You know, we start talking about our projects. I always feel inspired when I talk, when I hear an update on what he's doing, you know, and vice You're versa. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> and get all, you know, see new pages or whatever he's doing. It is, it's very inspiring. You get the juices flowing. Um, yeah. Any plans to come back to like the Chicago area? I don't know. Last year I did that Revo comic con revolution, um, which was great that show. Um, but I, uh, I haven't been invited. So you kind of go where you're invited, you know, I, got I haven't you. been invited to, to, um, C2E2 in a long time. So maybe next year we'll see. That'd be I awesome. Want I want to limit it because to just try to get my work set, my workout. Um, uh, I just got to get, I got to get my uh, Sofizo Graficos. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you. I'm glad you tried uh, to uh, if, I so, if he's Greek, if I so, <laughs> feel him. So, um, but uh, I'll do a show that, that you get invited to, but I got to cut down on my shows just because this year we're putting out Two more campaigns next year, 2021. We're going to do four of them. So if I could pick eight, wow. nine shows. Those are the ones I'll do. So if yeah. I get called, if I get invited to, uh, we're already going to, um, uh, what show is, is it Denver maybe in March? I think we already got invited to Denver is now in March of next year. So we're doing that. Um, I think it's in Denver's in March. And then South Carolina comes usually the end of March, so I'll be doing. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Denver. I think is in May, so oh, okay. we've already committed to a to a show in May for next year. And San Diego we do every year, you know. Okay. New York we do every year. Baltimore is my Baltimore. I love Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, they're just like my favorite shows. I I love Mark and Shelley Nathan. I think they mm -hmm. put on a great great show. And I'll, if as long as they have me, it will always do Baltimore. I just love them. I really do. I think they're they're so professional and so good to the to the to the guests, what they, how they treat us and everything like that. It's, and it's a comic con yeah. South Carolina, Mitch, Mitch Halleck has the terrific con up at, um, Mohegan sun. Same thing with him. It's a comic con first, you know, they'll have the celebrities, but cool. they're comic guys, you know, and they're really into the comics. Uh, same thing with Shelton, Shelton drum. <clears throat> uh, so Mark does a show. Shelton does a show. Uh, Rob Young down in South Carolina con does a show. Mitch does a show. I'll always do their shows if they'll have me. Nice. Yeah, well, that was a good, you know, I might have to make like, a like Hero, Heroes is a great show. Like Heroes in Baltimore, two of my favorite shows because, like you said, it's a Comic Con. It's about the artists. It's not the glitz, the glam, if you will. It's just, right, right. It's, it's good times, good times yeah. all around. Uh, let's see. Someone's asking me a question, but. I was just saying, Marco's got another question here. Yeah. He says, I'm going to ask another question because at this point, he's answered them all. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he said, Thanks, by the way, guys. And Billy, so he says, Billy, uh, are you a fan of spaghetti westerns? And what are your favorite ones? Oh, hmm. That's an interesting question. Let me think. Favorite spaghetti western? How about you guys, real quick, before I can think of mine? I was uh, I just saw uh, taped uh, "Hang Him High" on uh, right, my right. DVR, so I'm gonna check that out. Uh, I watched, uh, you know, I watched uh, Butch Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. For oh, the last time. Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid! I want to kick my own ass for not watching it many, many years ago. Oh, that's God a great God damn, What a great flick! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor Woodcock in there. I watched yeah. that movie with my dad when I was a little kid. It was one of the movies he specifically showed me. I've always had a fondness in my heart for that that movie. It's such a great movie, too. Yeah, I, I'd have to I say, though, my favorite spaghetti western is uh, probably Nebraska Jim, starring Rick fucking Dalton. 
<laughs> right. oh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Remember, that was his... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I that movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So that was the movies when he went over to make the spaghetti westerns. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Risk a gym. I, you know, I watched a ton of spaghetti westerns when I was a kid, but I can't actually... If you were to hammer me against the wall, they'd tell, me, tell you names and stuff. Yeah, the good like, thing about John about Wayne. One. Oh, I just watched that two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Good Great bad. Was like, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, um, they were fun. Anything by John Wayne. My dad loves John Wayne. Like, he was, he named me after his character in The Quiet Man. Oh, nice. My mother's like, I'm not going to name you Sean Thornton. I'm going to, I'll give you his, your name as his middle name because, like, I would get picked on, I guess, as Sean Thornton <laughs> in my last name. But, yeah, so. Well, are you Irish? Um, German, Irish, Italian, and Mexican. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you yeah. could be an Irish name. I could be. Yeah. Yeah, but my dad's a German, Italian, so it's kind of weird how oh, he's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Weird. So, uh, yeah, but see, if you talk about Western, man, see, there's differences. Like, the spaghetti Westerns are different. And I, I'd have to okay. say, man, absolutely. Um, yeah. It's got to be the good, bad, and the ugly. It's got to be that. Um, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking with spaghetti westerns, but I know because it's a certain way that they 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 filmed there, just the way they did the spaghetti westerns back in the day, as opposed to just like some of the actual like the more big budget westerns. I guess if that is that what is that yeah. right? Well, yeah, they were right? shot in Spain. They were shot in Spain, right. or in northern Italy. Okay. But the cool thing is that they probably looked more like the people looked in the West in the spaghetti westerns. How dirty they were. I mean, right. you know, it's not going to be like Roy Rogers riding around with, <laughs> right. you know, all clean and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah. but there was, uh, I love like my favorite uh, Westerns. Man, I love, I got to consider the Wild Bunch of Western. I love, uh, but then again, I love, I love um, Tombstone, you know, the newer one. Oh, yeah. You know, I love The Searchers with John Wayne. Uh, man, so many good stuff. Uh, I thought uh, in newer westerns, um, what's the one with uh, not Dancing with Wolves, which was great too, but the one with him and Annette Bening, uh, Robert Duvall. Uh, was, uh, it's a cowboy movie. It's, it's a western. White. It's a white herb. Open Range. No. Open, open range. range. Oh, Open Range. Yeah, yeah. And that was great. I love that movie. Um, yeah, westerns are great. That we could do a whole show on that by the day. I always loved Young Guns, but that's just me. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I grew up yeah, in. Yeah. Was, yeah, see, you're young. See, with me, like, yeah. I know these pretty boys, and I watch these pretty boys, and I never saw it. And so, oh, I, was I was probably like 20 oh. when it came out, so I'm like, I'm not giving a uh, shit. Yeah. Like, sure, sure, these black yeah. fat guys being, yeah. you know, being uh, <laughs> cowboys. You know, my cowboys are guys, you know, real yeah. nice, but, uh, you know, like I said, John Wayne, you know. Yep. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. I mean, obviously, I love everything yeah. that Clint Eastwood did. The Man with No Name, uh, all that kind of yeah, Unforgiven. Yep, so oh, many phenomenal stuff. flick. Phenomenal flick. Marco says, Nice pick, guys. My favorite westerns are the Sergio Leon film, Sergio. Cor I can't, I don't know why I can't fucking Corbucci. read today. Sergio film, Corbucci. yeah, Corbucci. There you go. Oh, Films like the good, the bad, and the ugly, and just purchased. The original Django, la, la, la. the Texas audio. I, I'm gonna stop reading. That, that was a mistake. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, have, uh, I have. I have those films, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, on laser discs. Wow. I have 25 laser discs. I even have mm. a laser disc. Yeah, I dude. barely remember that. I do. I barely remember they, they laser. They look disc. like shit. We. I. I set up the laser disc player on my. Uh, on our big TV. I've got like a 55 inch TV. And the resolution is terrible. My kids are watching like yeah, yeah, nothing. The resolution like is terrible. terrible. They all left. Really? It's like it's like VHS. You thought it was the sound is great, right? You thought yeah. it was you know when Laserdisc came out, like oh you got to get a Laserdisc, you know and yeah. And again, I, I I got I got the Star Wars Criterion Collection. It's wow. where uh, and Greedo still shoots first. I mean, I, I'm sorry, Han shoots first. Greedo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, but it's got the cool effects where the Death Star explodes with the ring. Um, yeah. yeah. But it looks like crap on a big TV. Maybe you watch on a small TV, it works. But holy crap, dude, it's terrible. Terrible. It's like pixel. There's the yeah, the laser disc. It's pretty shitty. <laughs> what What year was it that the laser disc were they coming came out? out? 90, I think they came out in 95 or 94. That's okay. Star Wars. 
that collection. Yep. Big, it's a big box set with, with episodes four, five, and six. So, oh my God, I need that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we could have a show just about fucking movies and westerns there for a while. Yeah, I talked to Chuck. We had Chuck Dixon on a few weeks ago when he started talking about, well, I'm like, dude, we got to do a show on this. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. And we'll do a show on war movies. Favorite war movie. Oh, there you go. I go by the decade. Favorite yeah, war movie yeah. of the 70s. Favorite war movie of the 80s. Favorite war. You know, we'll do it like that. That'd be cool. Yeah, see, like, I, I could I, do I'd like, watch Band of Brothers at least once a year. Dude, yeah, yeah I Band of Brothers, I could watch. That's a phenomenal show. Platoon. Oh, Love platoon, that movie yeah. growing up. Yeah. Oh, platoon awesome. was awesome. Yeah, I watched uh, Band of Brothers at least four or five times a year. <laughs> I did. Just great. Like, all around amazing. Show, I should say. All was it, uh... And, uh, what was that movie called? Fucking Hamburger Hill. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a great movie. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. man, they they used to make such good war movies. I mean, they still do. With I haven't seen like any of the newer ones that like the 1917. I haven't seen that one. Although oh, that's I really, great. oh my god, I heard so good cool. stuff about it. I haven't I seen like it. Fury. Before. I like Fury. I mean, there was something. Fury was so, really good. The technical. Th I like Brad Pitt. I think he's great. You know, I really yeah, do. He's I a, really have a, lot, yeah. a lot of respect for him yeah. as an actor. So I really like Fury. Um, like I said, some of the stuff isn't real, you know, the way they, they, you know, with the, with the tiger tank scene, oh, you, know, right. the, you know, the tactics weren't right. You know, little, little things like that bother me. Like instead of having like say a Thompson as his gun with the stock, take the rear stock taken off, he's got that big, yeah. uh, STG 44, the storm Gewehr, the German gun, which is huge. You know what I mean? With a big banana clip and he'd have to pull that out of the turret of the tank. And I, I know they picked it because it looks cool. Right. Oh, right. Had that. He would have had a grease gun or a Thompson. He probably would have had a Thompson without the uh, the rear stock on it. And then how, the, like I said, the Tiger tank could have killed, if you saw the movie, with the four tanks where it attacks them. That Tiger could have took them all out where it was. didn't even have to go anywhere. <laughs> so the Tiger tank comes out and challenges them. It's right, kind of yep. But, yeah, that was a hell of a movie. I really, I really did like that movie. Hell of a movie. Uh, Marco says just picked up Apocalypse Now the other day, 4K Blu-ray. Nice, yeah, that was always a. Yeah, that was a weird freaking movie. That that's that's, that's a trippy movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, Marco, did that come with like all the versions? Because I know there's a couple different updated and re-edited and all that. Hopefully, Marco will answer us. MD dangerously says Hyena is that Hyena Road is Hyena Road. I didn't see that. Hyena. Yeah, I don't think I've. Yep. I don't, Marco also said, uh, "Where Egos Dare" is another fantastic. Yeah, movie. Egos Dare is great. I don't think I've seen that one either, though. Great movie. Yeah, yeah Egos Dare is a fun movie, man. Marco says, "Yes, it did come with the versions and the great doc on, and the great doc on the film." Well, all right, all right. Yeah. all right. I gotta pick that up. It looks interesting because he he posted. I'm like, I oh, might got to get that. Um, I just saw a piece of art and I forgot to make a note to my color, so I gotta do that. Let's write that down. There Basically. you go. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we no. recolored 40 pages. I'm out of my mind. Um, fuck. I know there was more stuff I wanted to talk about with the, but you know, we'll definitely have to have you on again. Um, anytime, so boys, anytime I'm in. It's an honor. This has been great. Nah, the pleasure is all ours. Thank you guys so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's Next been time a I'm great. at a show with you, we'll, we're getting drinks. You got it. Absolutely, yeah. man. Well, Baltimore, yeah. we hang out. We have a, a – we, we yeah. do our little – our we call it Scotch Con. We call it Isaac Con. My bro Isaac, he started. Mm -hmm. And we all meet at the Hyatt Hotel or, yep. or whatever hotel we all stay. I think it was the Hyatt we all stayed at. Yeah. The shirt and outside, we smoke cigars. And we drink scotch. Bring your own hooch and your own cigar, man. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, yeah and, right. and it's great. It's great. We have a blast. We have such a blast. It's not even, it, it's it's one of the best times. It's during the um, the Ringo Awards. I've never been invited yeah. to the Ringo Awards, so I've never been nominated. So, uh, but we go outside after. We hang out on the outside of it. We get trash. It's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, it's a, that's a fun I'm time. It's a fun time. Cool. Friday night, man. That's what we do. I might have yeah. to make it down to Baltimore. One of these days. One of these days. Sean, where road trip. Where are you again? Uh, Michigan. Um, oh, that's right. You're in Michigan. Yep. Yeah, we have cousins uh, in Detroit, outside of Detroit. Oh, really? Yep. So Michigan's a, Michigan's like, a beautiful state, man. 
Yeah, yeah, I got one of my army buddies is a Ludington cop. Oh, nice. You know Ludington? He's out there. Yep, yep. Um, one of my best friends, you know, and uh, someday we'll get out there. I need a damn vacation. We're supposed to go on vacation that my wife planned a year ago, dude. Oh, my oh. God. She bought. Uh, we're supposed to go to Aruba with the kids because my oh, wife was grad. But with all this COVID stuff and me deciding to redraw half the comic, you know, and do sure. it. I'm behind yep. because I got to launch the next one, so I might not go on vacation. Let them go. Yeah. Gotta and stay then, busy. Uh, I'll, I'll take the boys. We'll go fishing or something. But I got to work, you know? Yeah. yeah. You got to pay the bills. You got to pay the bills. Got to pay the bills, Holmes. Paying the bills. Comic book Bob. Hell yeah. I'll bring some I'll bring Buffalo some Trace to share. All are welcome. <laughs> there you go. Bird. Is this a lot of talk about co comics and firearms and cigars yeah. and manly yeah. talk? <laughs> manly talk. <laughs> good times, man. It's all good times. Um, all right, everybody. I'm going to wrap up the stream, but before I do, uh, really want you to plug anything you want to plug. Tell us where we can find your work, what we should be looking out for, all that good shit. Well, if, if you wouldn't mind, if I could post uh... – uh, the link. Let me see if I can find it and I could share it. Unless you could share it on your screen. I got Miss Fury at right Dynamite. Has Miss Fury live on Indiegogo right now? Yep. Hold on a second. Um, I just had that up not too long ago. I can bring it back up. Boom. There you go. There we go. Right there. So um, there's Miss Fury's live right now. Uh, we've got what, 11 days left. We're almost at we're almost at uh, 45,000 to unlock our next stretch goal, which is a <laughs> Miss Fury uh, nose art trading card, which is cool. And uh, and then, of course, I have She Returned the Warrior. We're in the last weeks of that. That's uh, on Indiegogo as well in demand. And uh, we'll be ending the rough cut edition, which is my roughs. My You know, my pencils are real rough. Um, yeah. And, and then with word balloons and all. And then we'll be doing our pure line edition, which is the black and white art, line art. But those will be ending soon because we need our numbers, you know? Right. Yeah. How many to print? Because they go to print in the next two weeks, those books. And then it should be in the next three weeks is when the whole book goes to press. We're just going over colors. With, you know, it's pretty cool, man. It's exciting. Very cool. Get that Very inspiring. Very inspiring. Patel, MD Dangerously is definitely in. Awesome. He's got his yeah. uh, Carrillo and uh, his Rocky Patel, man. We're there. You're in with us. Uh, so yeah, Probably, so he's over on Indiegogo. We're almost at 108, and uh, it's it just hit with our No Fan Left Behind campaign because we did a Kickstarter and Indiegogo simultaneously. Uh, we're over we're over 178,000. So thank you all for helping yes, us. Uh, really, really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's been an absolute pleasure having you here, Billy. Um, stick around for a little bit if you would after we end this broadcast and we'll uh at something i gotta talk to you about um sean my friend where can we find you on the interwebs you can find me at sean Arrett. there's my fucking camera there it is um <laughs> you can't find that i don't know where it is I don't, whatever it's make whatever. a note make a note yeah uh, tomorrow instagram twitter facebook youtube and Fridays and Saturdays with Mark Poulton, um, Primetime Poulton, the best friend show, because we're best friends with Phil McNally, and we talk about nonsense. There you go. It's awesome. That's where you can find me. What about you, Joey? Twitter, Instagram, blah. Facebook, obviously. You know, we're on uh, Tumblr, fucking Art Station, DeviantArt, YouTube. Check this out. If you're watching this on Facebook right now, Go to the YouTube channel where this is also broadcasting and give it give us a like and a subscribe and a share. We are all on YouTube, all three of us. Yeah, Joe M. Sontag, Sean Aaron, look at Billy Tush. What's your uh what's your uh YouTube handle, Billy? Yeah, uh you can go to uh check us out at the Pop XP. Pop, Pop culture XP. experience. There uh, you go. Show with Niall Scala. I have my own show, the, the Billy Tucci YouTube channel. Um, but I've been kind of focusing on Pop XP, growing that okay. channel, you know. And uh, we're on. We have shows several times a week. So we have a lot right. of talk crowdfunding and comics, talk about comic news, talking. Yeah, it's a great show. It's great fun. Show. Yeah, it's good. It's a good yeah. time. So that's that's what we're here for. To have a good time. 
Uh, you also have a crowd or that one show uh, you do is a, a crowdfunding show. Are you yeah, highlight crowdfunding comics? Yeah, yeah, yeah crowdfunding I, I comics. The Pop XP because the show the channel is expanding, but we have every week we, we still have a Pop X, uh, I still have a crowdfunding comic show on the channel. Yeah. So, nice. That's our main thing. That's what we like to do. But we wanted to expand because I'm inviting you know Walter Simonson on and yeah. and Matt Wagner wow. and you know, all these guys are like you know, and they're like yeah you know Tom Lennon and Ben Garant from Reno 911 and they're like yeah we'll come on but that's I'm awesome not funding a comic book <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I'm not it's like yeah okay so that's why we change the name so thanks for checking it out MD Dangerously um so yeah everybody go to the YouTube channels we all have them subscribe like share them all um it really does help the whole YouTube algorithm when you get likes and you get subscribers, uh, especially building the show, the out and stuff show that Sean and I, uh, we broadcast on both of our channels, both, both our Facebooks and all that good shit. So we're trying to get that out there so we can get really more cool guests like Billy on. Uh, it's been an absolute, absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming on. I, I'm going to say it again and again. I've been looking forward to this all week and it did not disappoint. I mean, this was a fun, entertaining show. I'm, extremely excited right now like i don't want to end the stream but i like i feel like we should we need to at some point <laughs> you guys are awesome Man, if you want me on please i'm on all right no, absolutely thank, thank you, thank you. Um, all right everyone you well thank you for checking us out we will see you all later and we're ending the broadcast now you won't see our sexy faces till next time peace <laughs>